Good morning from London. As many of you know, I absolutely love being back in London. I lived here for about 10 years and I always get so excited coming back. I only left here like under two years ago, so it still like feels, I don't know, it still feels like part of me stayed, like I never fully left when I come back, but there's also this new, newfound appreciation of the place. Like, I think when you live in a in a city or a town, you it's hard to actually fully, fully, fully appreciate it, right? But I think when you leave for a while, you then see the things that you maybe didn't notice before. So coming back to London now as a visitor, I suppose, I feel like I am just wide-eyed looking around in complete awe and noticing buildings that I never noticed before. It's like I'm just looking up the whole time now, whereas before I was probably looking down on Google Maps trying to figure out how to get to the next meeting. Like, <laughs> there's no stress when I come back this time. I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna enjoy every single minute, which is not realistic when you live in a place. Um, and I've been back in the UK now for a good couple of weeks. I was down in Sussex for Christmas, spending some family time. And then I came up to London about five days ago. I'm staying at the Langham Hotel, which I've never stayed in before. I have been here for a photo shoot once, and I think I've had afternoon tea here, but I have never stayed. And wow, it is so special. <laughs> like. I didn't realize how luxe and special this hotel was until staying this time around. And I will say we're staying in <laughs> the most unbelievable suite. So this is the infinity suite. I don't know why I'm like keeping my voice down. Like I need to be like, it's amazing. <laughs> like I need to play it cool. I can't let them hear, but it's amazing. <laughs> But they've put me in, it's gifted, they invited me to come and stay and I obviously leapt at the chance to spend a few nights in Soho. We're right by Oxford Circus. This view! And yeah, this is the Infinity Suite. I will give you a, um, a full suite tour in a minute and trust me, you want to stick around for this suite tour because I have never shown a room like this before. I've never stayed in a room like this before. And the bed is even from Emily in Paris. Before I get changed, I just need to show you my dressing gown. <laughs> they have put so much effort into this stay, which I so, so appreciate. And you'll see, I need to show you the pillows in a minute. Like, I think I screamed when I got into bed. <laughs> okay, here we go. Welcome to the Infinity Suite at the Langham London. So this is our hallway, the bed over there, more on the bed in a minute just to come. Look at this beautiful living room. <gasps> I absolutely love the interior design with these arches. I've got a real thing for arches, by the way. I just think they make a room look and feel so grand. So you can imagine, like, I had no idea, by the way, I was walking into this. I was expecting a more, like, standard room, I suppose. So, yeah, <laughs> I was shook, to say the least. And we're right on Regent Street. So just down there is Oxford Circus. And at night, you can see all of those twinkly lights. Still feels Christmassy. And then, yeah, oh, wow. I also just like half tripped over and half said wow, so that's why it sounded a little crazy. <laughs> and I actually yesterday went for a really nice walk straight up there. You just continue walking for about five minutes and you get to Regent's Park. So I went for a lovely early morning walk and it was a really beautiful day. Today's a little grey. So this is obviously such a contrast to life in Bali and I was speaking about this yesterday, just making this comparison. I think the reason I absolutely loved Bali when I first went in April 22 to like actually spend lots of time, I'd been there years before but never for an extended period of time. I think the reason I loved it so much then was because it was such a contrast to London. London is all about the fashion, the makeup, the hair, like how you look, how you present yourself and actually taking a lot of pride in how you present yourself to the world. And then Bali is the opposite. Bali is literally like no makeup. Hair's just up because of the humidity. Um, I barely wear jewellery. My clothes are as 
minimum and like simple as possible, mostly linen, um, like linen shirts, bikinis, denim shorts, um, Birkenstocks. That's pretty much my Bali uniform because it's so hot. And I've tried <laughs> like wearing, not wearing my like London stuff, but making more of an effort. I suppose you just get so hot and uncomfortable and you just end up feeling a bit silly. But I loved that at the beginning of Bali, it was just like, wow, this is such a difference. Like everyone is equal. There are no brands. There is nothing that would set you apart, I suppose, from another person. And I loved that feeling of being in a co coffee shop and everyone in that coffee shop is from a different walk of life, different careers, different upbringings, from a different part of the world. But everyone is on a level playing ground and everyone's chatting to everyone. There's no hierarchy, I suppose. So that is the difference. That's part of the reason why I have spent the last year and a half back and forth in Bali. I just love how, I guess it brings me back down to earth. Um, and it's a beautiful lifestyle. It's sunny, it's, you know, people go there to surf, I go for the yoga. So it's um, a complete contrasting lifestyle to London. However, having now spent the best part of a year and a half in Bali and living there, I suppose, back and forth, coming back to London, I do appreciate everything that maybe frustrated me or overwhelmed me beforehand. And it is like I see London through a different lens. And I love the grandiose of the buildings, the architecture, the hotels. It's so grand. It's beautiful. And I am like people watching the whole time as well, looking at how people are dressed. And London, if you know it, you'll know this. It, it's like a cluster of lots of different towns rather than London being one big city. New York is like this as well. So you'll notice the fashion is completely different in different parts of London. So if you're walking down the King's Road, in West London, in Chelsea, you'll notice a very particular kind of fashion of, you know, beautiful designer handbags, beautiful coats, um, very like pristine, prim and proper women, you know, <laughs> a lot of the time wearing their furs, like it's that kind of vibe. But then if you're in East London walking down Brick Lane, it's a much cooler vibe, like less effort, but they just look like it's kind of thrown together, but they naturally look cool. It's like effortless cool, you know? And I'm just noticing that more than I ever did before when I lived here. I'm just like, ah, this, like I'm loving what people are wearing. And even in January, like when it's cold and a bit dark and miserable. Um, yeah, it's such a contrast. So I'm just recognizing like how intro, I'm just gonna switch arms because my right arm is going dead. Whew, oh, that's better. My right arm then, I just noticed like up here was going dead. I know I'm making like such a dramatic contrast here and comparison because Bali and London, obviously, they couldn't be more different. Bali is island living, London is city living. But I think this can, in a way, be applied to even your hometown, you know? Like a lot of us move away from our hometowns where we were born. And um, yeah, I'm personally just recognizing such a, a, an appreciation, a gratitude for a place that I'd lived for so many years and I'm just noticing things now that I hadn't necessarily noticed before. I also feel there's a part of me that comes alive when I'm here. I love the drive, I love the buzz, I love this like motivation that I just absorb, like I feel the energy of the city and it makes me want to get stuck into something and like I want to start projects and I want to work with these people. It's like it's an amazing place for working, networking, meeting interesting people and um, feeling inspired and getting new ideas. Um, so my dream would be to eventually have an apartment in Notting Hill, of course, my absolute favourite place. Loved living there. So the dream would be to split my time between Notting Hill and Bali. Like, mm, wow, one day. <laughs> For now I'm just visiting, which is um, amazing. Not bad, eh? <laughs> Okay, let's continue on with the room tour. I kind of started rambling then. This is the unbelievable bed. So this is apparently the actual one that's in Emily in Paris. You can see I've actually tried to make the bed as best I can this morning and please like just ignore the state of it. This is not how it looks normally in the morning when the professionals have been in to clean and they make it look amazing. But yeah, anyone who is a fan of Emily in Paris 
there is a scene where there's a photo shoot outside on this bed and apparently this is the exact bed. Also, apparently it cost £60,000. So when I checked into this room, the girl was like, please let me know how it is to sleep in this bed because it costs £60,000. I was like, what? I was like, I can't, I can't touch it. <laughs> like, are you sure? <laughs> but I can confirm the best night's sleep. Like, it was like sleeping on a cloud like unreal okay and then through i'm gonna show you this little room this is like the beauty room where you can do your hair and makeup they even have little boxes for your jewelry and coats i suppose so that's like i thought that was the walk-in wardrobe by the way but yeah it isn't <laughs> just wait in a minute you'll see and this is the infinity bath this is why the room is called infinity it's because I had a bath last night. Basically, you run the water and it runs over there and then into there. I have never seen a bath like it. Oh, I just tripped over again. <laughs> I've never seen a bath like this before. A little dressing gowns. And okay, back out here. A little shelong to shelong on. <laughs> this is the walk in wardrobe. Like, yeah, wow. <laughs> I think I was most excited about this wardrobe when I came in here. I was like, what? Oh my goodness. I've never, I've never experienced a walk-in wardrobe like this before. So um, yeah, that was pretty exciting. Shall I do a little outfit of the day here? So I've got these jeans on from Balzac and also the blazer is navy and that's from Balzac too. This jumper I have had for a couple of years from a brand called Jam Industries. They have a store on the King's Road and also in Sulcombe in, um, in Devon, or is it Cornwall? <gasps> Someone's going to correct me there or, or just let me know what it is. Is Sulcombe Devon? I think it's Devon, isn't it? Yeah, I really should know that. Um, and I love all of their knitwear. It's so beautiful. And this is just like a go-to jumper. It's lasted really really well it's actually longer than a couple of years definitely longer i don't know where the time has gone and then these boots are from stuart weitzman i actually bought them in like a 70 percent off sale at bista village a few years ago and they're like unbelievably comfortable they're the kinds of things that like i wouldn't have bought full price because i didn't think i like needed a pair of boots that much but in the sale i was like hmm this is very tempting Turns out one of the best purchases I think I've ever made and I wear them non-stop. Oh, and also hair. You know this by now, I just put my hair in two plaits in the evening and then in the morning I just brush them through and you just get like natural looking waves. I've actually just had a real quick outfit change because it is still really, really cold outside. So I've put my Max Mara Manuela coat on and this scarf I bought years ago in Scotland, in Edinburgh. And then this is my Aspinall of London tote bag. Still got the jeans, still got the jumper, still got the boots. And it's time to check out of the hotel. Although I am really excited to go to Notting Hill. I'm staying in Notting Hill for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And in a friend's house as well. So that will be lovely in my old stomping ground. And um, yeah, still sad to check out of this epic room. There was a one percent I should love to do a shallow stay. Mm. That is so true. <laughs> I think that's in the film uh, Last Christmas where he's like, look up, there's so much to see. So we are in the city of London. Wee. Wee. <laughs> and we are about to get brain scans. Now, I think this is going to be absolutely fascinating. Um, it's not something I've ever done before. Revealing. And revealing, Very hopefully not too scary. Like another element of like self-awareness, <laughs> but from a more scientific, um, medical perspective, I suppose. Oh, it's getting busy. And the guy we're seeing is called Chris Zimmer. Oh, look, my scarf just blew off, that keeps happening. Chris Zimmer at Peak Brains, they've just launched in. Oh, my God, my scarf, it's so windy. 
other way. <laughs> and they've just launched in London. And I'm hoping we get our results today. So I'm in a little room and I'm doing a test where I have to click every single time I hear a one, but not when I hear a two. So it's essentially going to be like, uh, I believe, multiple tests and then at the end they'll have lots and lots of data so um, and then they do the brain mapping so so interesting I feel like it's um did you ever do the driver's test theory you know the theory test this is kind of what it's reminding me of so this is a just an abrasive gel that helps us to get a good signal mm -hmm. just gonna mop it in wide circles about an inch above the center of each eyebrow I feel like I'm having my makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> you had a driving theory test and now you're having your <laughs> makeup, makeup yeah. done. Okay, so if I line them up there, yeah. and then just hold those hold in place, yeah. that's great. This is a fantastic look. I'm going to pull those over, <laughs> and I'm just going to tuck these discs in there. Okay. Should feel snug, but not too tight. Yep. It looks pretty good. <laughs> great. Absolutely. Fantastic. How's that feeling now? Oh, it feels really weird. <laughs> <laughs> it literally looks like he's injecting your forehead. Wow, yeah, it's like Cold gun and <laughs> But apparently it is good condition. It doesn't show. <laughs> okay. Getting a hair treatment at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that looks tough. Does it look really weird? It looks really weird. It feels weird. <laughs> yeah, just set, just, and I'd also put that in on the, so it's not in the hands of the stable. Just wait for that to settle. Yeah, so what I'm saying here is that um, this signal here, so the squiggly line at T3 above the left ear, I'm pretty sure this is a little bit of jaw tension. Um, and so to illustrate that, I'll get you to tense your jaw hard. And you can see the extent to which that distorts the signal. And mm -hmm. similarly, if you blink your eyes, do some big blinks, same thing again. So when we're doing, mm -hmm. when we're doing the brain mapping, it's important to try and keep a soft jaw um, and also <laughs> to not blink where you can. Because you'll see the extent, it's super sensitive to okay. electrical noise. Um, so this is a time to meditate. The meditation hands. Yes. Um, I'll get you set up in a minute, let's just have a look. Excuse the hair, I've got all of this gel stuff in there. That was so, so interesting. I'm going to hold on to Jamie here because I'm going to get run over. So interesting. I actually made a mistake earlier when I said it can diagnose ADHD. It's not a diagnosis, but it will show the markers for certain things like ADHD, trauma to the brain, um, and we get our results in about 48 hours and that involves a call with the founder of Peak Brain who's called Dr. Andrew Hill who's quite well known in this space and I think that call will be fascinating we haven't had any like results or anything like that yet but um, yeah excited to what do you think it's going to say? We're uh, geniuses. <laughs> geniuses. Fantastic brains. This is a hidden gem right in Liverpool Street. Notting Hill and I feel so happy. I had quite a funny moment though. I think of these like rom-com movies where there's always a bit of like a scatty girl who's like tripping over and really clumsy and forgetful and that's kind of me in London even though I'm like super productive and like on the ball and busy 
it kind of comes hand in hand with that like scattiness and forgetfulness. And I just had this moment of getting my suitcase out of the back of the taxi, which is so heavy because it's got all of my Bali stuff in there, all of my Christmas stuff from the past couple of weeks, like my winter wardrobe, summer wardrobe, and kind of like the lovely taxi man like helped me out, like help get the, uh, the case out of the car. And then off he goes, I'm like, oh, thank you so much. That was such a massive help. I just like walk up the road with my case and get to the front door and then see all these steps. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> And I'm like lugging this huge, heavy suitcase, like one step at a time, up, up, up. And I just had this vision in my head. I started laughing because I was like, I could quite easily just accidentally let go. And I can just imagine the suitcase like flying down the stairs, into the pavement, into the road. Like that would so be something that would happen to me. Anyway, I then I <laughs> finally got to the top. I was like, yeah. I'm here, I open the front door and then I forget, oh yeah, I've got the other stairs. Now, if you have been watching me for a while, you would remember that my last flat in Notting Hill was on the top floor, on the fourth floor, and I had just an unbelievable amount of steep, steep, steep steps. It was like quite a small, narrow building and like almost like a ladder, up, 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 up. And every time going on holiday with the suitcases and moving in, moving out, <gasps> like total disaster but that, I, I kind of love it like I was laughing to myself it was like weirdly nostalgic like dragging up the suitcase to the top floor um and I just had this moment like coming over to the window in the living room looking around and just thinking oh, hello London I'm back <laughs> and it feels good it feels good oh and a little bit about how I came to be here so while I was in Bali I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, I started reminiscing about London and weirdly missing London, even though when I was in London, I was craving Bali life. Funny how life works like that. We always want what we don't have. Anyway, I was talking to Jamie and I was like, I just have this dream to spend a couple of weeks in London, but I don't know where I would stay. And like, yeah, I, I just hadn't got it figured out. And then the next day, my friend texts me, saying, I don't suppose you need anywhere to stay in London in January, do you? Because I'm moving out, my flat is still there, still fully furnished, and thought you might like it. And I was just like, wow, that's like manifesting <laughs> to an absolute T, like to the next day to receive that message. So um, yeah, I was just like, wow, you read my mind. Yes, please, would absolutely love, love, love to take your apartment for a couple of weeks. So Jamie has now actually gone back to Dublin to spend some time with his family. And it gives me time to just enjoy and absorb Notting Hill. And it's worked out so perfectly. Welcome to glamorous Ladbroke Grove. I love it here, there's such character. It's charming in its own little way. I used to wake up super early here and watch everyone, it's the new year, and watch everyone like get all of their market stalls out and put everything out at like seven in the morning. And it felt like the rest of London hadn't woken up. I loved it, it felt special. I've just been for a glass of wine at Granger & Co with my friend Eva so nice she's one of those friends where you could have months and months apart and you see each other and it just feels like no time has passed at all and can just like chat 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 all night so lovely and i'm just walking home it feels like i'm back in a past life it's really weird like like i'd never left notting hill like i love it but it's also weird i'm like yeah like the past year and a half in bali just weirdly didn't happen strange these are the best cinnamon buns. It's called Buns From Home. And you can see them in the evening making all of their, their buns for the morning. So good, I might have to come here actually tomorrow. It's now a few days later and I just had my call with Dr. Andrew Hill who ran through my results from the brain testing. I am just finding it so interesting because I've never even considered having this kind of insight into my brain and um, he ran through the results and the original test at the beginning where it was all about like speed and focus where I had to click every time I saw a one 
was really, really good. He was like, you're above average, uh, way above your age range. And um, I was really speedy. So I was like, woohoo. I actually did way better. Like the results were better than I expected. So I'm feeling pretty chuffed with myself. And then we went on to the actual um, brain mapping. And this measures like the electrical currents that run through the brain. And this is where it can map out certain areas of your brain that may be weaker than others um, that can lead to things like bad quality sleep, inability to like focus for long periods of time, like that, that kind of thing. And so mine was generally good. However, and this isn't actually a surprise to me, we went through the different kind of modes of the brain. So like the alpha, which is where you're neutral, and then the other side, beta, which is where you're in more of like a restful sleep state. And then the other side, what was it? Oh my goodness, I can't even remember. The other side was the opposite end of the spectrum where it was more um, active. And so my neutral side was good, but the um, restful state actually doesn't rest as well as it probably could. Now, that isn't shocking for me because I know that I definitely am the kind of person that benefits a lot from meditation. I think we all benefit from meditation. Um, but because I struggle to switch off, it's particularly like good <laughs> for me. So he definitely said that he was like, you, you know, meditation would be great for you. And so because of this um, kind of struggle or inability to fully relax and recover, my, the other side is way more, like overactive. And that is me, like I'm an overthinker. I'm like more on the anxious side, I suppose. Like brain is always switched on, always thinking, always overthinking things. Um, I'm a very deep thinker. So I'm not surprised by these results, but the good news is there are ways to help with this to create more of a balance and meditation is one um another thing is sleep like getting really good sleep now obviously it's like well what comes first because actually the the overthinking and like the overactive brain would lead to bad sleep but it could also be like the lack of sleep that leads to that um but one tip that i thought was brilliant that andrew provided was to not eat too late um, so not past around like 6 p.m. But the other thing that I didn't know was that actually when you wake up in the morning, it's not great for your brain to do vigorous exercise. Now, I used to be in this routine of waking up, going straight on a really long run or boxing or hit workouts first thing in the morning. And um, for women, that can really disrupt our hormones as well. That's a separate thing, though. And so his advice was to actually do yoga in the morning or a walk, something like that, get some sunlight if you can. And then if you want to do vigorous exercise, it's best to do between 3 and 7 p.m. Now, I didn't know that. That is like news to me. But interestingly, the past few days, that is what I have been intuitively doing. So I've been doing my yoga in the morning and then I go to a spin class at 6 p.m. And that has been so good for me. Like that timing really, really suits me. So like he basically validated what I've been doing already, which I loved. And um, what else did he say that was really interesting? Oh, spoke a little bit about fasting. Not so great for women. Now, intermittent fasting for women is okay. Um, if you're, if you have like, a smaller like a shorter window of fasting if that makes sense but doing like full day fasts and especially if you're doing that frequently actually isn't that beneficial to women now please don't like quote me I am not a doctor <laughs> like I am not giving advice right now um this is just a topic that we spoke about on that call and I found that really interesting um because I'm a woman and I've also like exper experimented with fasting over the years in various forms and it doesn't really suit me. It doesn't really serve me. Um, so yeah, hearing him say that, I was like, ah, interesting. Okay, I actually personally found that as well. Like for me, um, I need to eat more frequently. Um, and if I skip meals, I can get really 
like lightheaded. I just don't feel great. So um, that was a really interesting one. So yeah, super interesting. Like I've never spoken about the brain on social media before. And to be honest, I haven't given it much thought. Um, I said to him, so like the brain, because it's here, you don't really see it or think about it. And it's like your brain forgets the brain because it's like here. And um, yeah, I, I really hope that his business, Peak Brains, does really well now that it's come to London because I think it's such an exciting space. And I think to gain more insight around how you operate and um, how your brain is working is just really valuable information. So yeah, I hope you found this interesting as well. And um, I will see you very soon. I'm really enjoying being in London, by the way. I've been here a few days now um, since I filmed the rest of this video and I'm loving it, it's so nice. But more on that to come, I'll film another video. Thank you for watching, bye.